They're these little miracle compounds that in extremely small dosages help with anti-aging, help with overall quality of life, and don't interrupt the HPTA hormonal axis. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is sponsored by 1907. Check out 1907.com in the description below. Coupon code Russo, here's your sip. Let's not forget about the ASMR spritz. Intelligent Elephant Carbon coupon code Russo. Here's your noises. That was a pretty weak one, here's a better one. Ooh. Gorilla Mind coupon code Russo as well, but this is the sister company, Intelligent Elephant. Today's rant, and I'm getting angry. SARMs are actually safe. Change my mind. Let me discuss my points first. I've been reading online, you know, I've been searching, seeing what search ranked, et cetera, et cetera. And I think the grand scheme of why SARMs were developed is just never stated. The whole point and why you can tinfoil at Russo here, I don't know anything. I, don't, I studied information systems in college with one semester of cinematography in there. No biochem background. I do enjoy reading biochem, but when I read into why SARMs were developed, they they were developed as a complement to your natural testosterone in extremely low dosages, which yielded no side effects. Meaning, if you gave the general population 0.5 milligrams of Austrian a day, there would be no recordable biomarker side effects, yet there would be bone density increase, better cognitive function, and overall no estrogen or DHT related issues of adding in a synthetic androgen on top of your natural testosterone with it not being enough to suppress the HPTA hormonal access and it not being liver toxic compared to the normal things an average American ingests every day. This is why SARMs were developed. Anti-aging, keeping your bones and muscles dense and strong as you age. If you gave a nursing home a milligram of said individual SARM that has been studied in the efficacious dosages, and I'll have Andrew Lincoln NCBI study of just like Austrian. That is why they were developed. They were never developed to be used for bodybuilding purposes and bodybuilding dosages to push super physiological amounts of tissue onto the body. I was having a conversation with someone in the gym my local gym and he was like you know man i feel really good on five meg a day of austrian i love the mood enhancement and overall i'm not looking for anything crazy i'm not looking to build an unmaintainable super physiological enhanced physique that will deteriorate i wanted something to complement my natural testosterone i didn't get capsule i got liquid i measured it out and i started at one i scaled to five overall feel fantastic that's why they are developed they virtually have no side effects at that insignificant minuscule dosage yet they yield a lot of benefit of them being only selective towards skeletal muscle and bone extremely high binding affinity no conversion to dihydrotestosterone aka make your hair fall out make your skin look like shit and no conversion to e2 estrogen right there's no estrogen conversions no dht conversion in that minuscule dosage of 0.5 to one mega day of Austrian, there's virtually no side effects. When we look at the more powerful SARMs, even at one milligram, there's noticeable suppression. So not all SARMs are created equal, but remember the original goal of SARMs, and I'm gonna use Austrian S4, AC262 as examples, right? The mild ones, the ones that you go in the bodybuilding forums and like, this ain't doing shit. Coach Trevor said it the best. SARMs, you're not supposed to notice anything happening and they're working. And that um, podcast got completely removed off of YouTube. I will have Andrew link the iTunes of Coach Trevor talking about SARMs. And you know, I agree. I agree 100%. That's what they're developed. They're these little miracle compounds that in extremely small dosages help with anti-aging, help with overall quality of life, and don't interrupt the HPTA hormonal axis. It doesn't notice them in the small amount. Now, when you start flooding the androgen level with these synthetic androgens, and the body notices that a lot of testosterone spillover means 
meaning that these SARMs are occupying the androgen receptors, your natural testosterone is still being pumped out of the gonads. When it goes to bind and gets beat out by these SARMs, it causes excess estrogen and DHT conversion. Your body notices that, and that's where the side effects start to occur. If you use it the way it's developed in the science at the tiny ass dosages, it's very hard to make arguments against them. It's only warranted to make arguments against them in the psychotic bodybuilding abuse category where anything goes. There's no rules. That's why I like bodybuilding. But that being said, you miss the original point of why SARMs were developed. If I have a grandmother who's extremely brittle, one mega a day of Austrian, which I've seen grandmas get prescribed DECA. And even at my TRT company, we have older ladies being prescribed androgens to maintain their quality of life. DECA has its own list of side effects, even at a little dosage. One mig to 0.5 mega a day of Austrian is going to make those bones, again, according to the medical data, anywhere between 20 to 40% stronger with virtually no side effects, virtually no impact on biomarkers. I've seen it in the extremely low dosage category. Now, when you push it into bodybuilder dosages of anywhere of 10 to I've done 50 milligrams a day of Austrian, liver toxic, starts fucking with the cholesterol, starts throwing all the hormones out of whack because you're flooding the body. Side effects are dosage dependent. Same thing goes for overall steroid abuse. Steroids are actually healthy as shit because you can abuse the daylights out of them for a decade and nothing happened and the health problems rear their head later in life. That's how safe they are. We don't need to put everyone in this category of, oh, he's on steroids or, oh, he's on swims, he's going to die. It's dosage dependent. It's harm mitigation dependent. And overall, it's how, what, what you want out of this? Do you want the biohacking health span a little bit better? Keep all the biomarkers relatively normal in this not normal world? Or are we going for gold? Are we pushing it to the limits? Are we building a race car here that's destined to blow up? Or you got to go back to stage one eventually if you're pushing above stage three on a car, right? If you want it to last long, otherwise you got to rebuild the entire car. So I think that's my rant. You know, I'm tired of seeing, oh, we don't know what's going to happen long term with these short acting compounds that half-life out of the body that were meant to be dosed in these minuscule dosages where all the medical data is so promising. And LGD 4033 of Andrew find that it's in the last phases of the trials being pushed through multiple trials. Why is that? Why was there millions of dollars spent? Because when you use them in the dosages they were studied, they very much are safe as shit. There's no debating that. The data is there around a milligram a day of Austrian, around 0.5 milligrams a day of Austrian. What in the blood work biomarkers is so glaringly bad for all the proposed benefits? Like I said, Coach Trevor on the podcast that got censored said SARMs were meant to be developed so you don't even feel them working. That's the dosages they're supposed to be dosed at. You start pushing the dosage out into the moon, you're going to have all the other side effects of regular gear. And then you're going to trash SARMs, run them through the mud, when in reality, they were meant to be a complement onto your natural testosterone as you age to maintain a higher overall androgen level, to not cause DHT or estrogen conversion, to be only selective towards skeletal muscle and bone and overall increased cognitive ability of the central nervous system which we see in certain ones highlighted the r8140 neuroprotective study i will see you guys in my next video